Hey, good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer. It's uh, been an interesting uh, week that I had last week. So um, I'll just wait for a few people to come on and uh, then we'll say hello to people and get going. It's a bit foggy out there, isn't it? Hi, welcome. Welcome to Morning Prayer. I've got three on. Hi, Christine. The name's starting to come up now. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Hope you've had a good week. Hi, Roz. Welcome to Morning Prayer. Hi, Chris and Caroline. Welcome. Let's see a few more come up. I've got everything ready for the Morning Prayer. Hi, Judy. Welcome. Just wait for a few more to come on. Caroline, hi. Welcome to Morning Prayer. I was a little bit late uh, starting. It was 10 minutes and then I looked up and then it was 9 o'clock. Morning, Jamie. How are you getting on? Uh, hi, Claire. Hi, Kate. And let's just see a few more. Right. Well, it's two minutes past nine. Hi, Bill and Sheila. Welcome. Hi, Pat and Ray. Hi, Mary. Hi, Christine. Hi, Janet. Hi, Kate. I think I've said hello to bit. Hi, Mary. Oh, hi, Mike. Hi, Mary. Right, I'm just going to let me. All right, do you want to go out? Do you want to go see what Daddy's doing? Right, you're on then. When you're out, you're out. Sorry about that. Uh, right. Good morning to all from Pat and Ray. How else is everybody else doing? So I just wheel my chair so I'm comfy and in the right place. Right, so um, probably a little bit of uh, full disclosure about what's been going on this last week. I had a couple of migraines last week. Um, I have already been checked out previously by the doctor. Uh, hi, Aileen. Um, so it's fine, it's just migraines. Um, they sometimes happen to me. I am monitoring them because they are a little more frequent than normal. Um, however, Alex had a um, painful swollen knee on Wednesday and came home early from work. So we took a trip up to A&E on the Wednesday night and he was given painkillers, but it didn't get better and the swelling got worse. And so I took him back to A&E Thursday night and then at about two o'clock Friday morning, they said they were, he let me know that they were going to keep him in and I collected him on Friday afternoon. So it's been um, quite stressful as the week um, has gone. He is getting better, but the swelling is taking a while to go down. So he's off work. Hi, Kate. Um, he was due to pick our son up from Aberystwyth on Saturday. Uh, so... We, uh, I had to go and do that drive, which was quite pleasant. I like watch, I like um, driving, so it wasn't too bad. It was just quite long. Um, so over to Aberystwyth, um, and because my son wasn't able to get a COVID test, I'm now isolating. He's had his test while uh, yesterday in Swindon. Um, so in some ways, given the fact that the the quick rapid tests that he would have had at university. Um, are prove it are yielding quite a lot of false negatives. Um, it's probably a better test really that he's had he's had on Sunday. Um, so I'm just uh, isolating until we get the results of that, which will hopefully be by Wednesday. So please don't knock on our door. We are a bit like we need a sort of cross on the front to sort of mark on clean rather than a wreath. But we will be back in action. There's nothing wrong with the household. We are, well, apart from the husband, we are all fine. I'm just not going to be able to be out and about just to make sure that I keep everybody safe until we've had Joel's results. All his flatmates have tested negative, so that's all good. So all should be well. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> hope this day is good. Yeah, I really hope this day is good. I hope this week is good. I hope the rest of this year is good. Um, yeah, so that was really just to fill you all in about what's been happening 
Um, I wanted to make sure that I kept everybody safe, even though it's highly unlikely Joel has had COVID. I have sat in the car for four hours with him. Um, there was no point in testing myself because I wouldn't have developed the um, the symptoms or have enough antibodies to register yesterday. So we will um, hopefully we'll pray for a nice clear um, result that is negative. Uh, so I can get back in action and face to face with people. But until then, it will be remote. Um, one of those things that we all have to get used to um, with many of the ministry team with um, children and school, um, school age children. Yeah, they're, 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 they're isolating left, right and centre um, in their support bubbles when various cases crop up. So we have to be positive, but we have to be reactive to what's going on. Morning, Liz. I've sent you an email. You, Liz and Roger were very kind um, and offered sage advice to us. And we weren't really very sure what to do next. So um, always used to have, for, to have somebody's wisdom and advice when you don't know what to do. So, right, I have waffled on long enough. I'm going to light our candle. It's the beginning of the week. I'm praying for a better week, I'm sure, and I hope you are praying for a good week too. We are nicely in Advent now. What perhaps is God saying to you this Advent season? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Morning June. You'll have to catch up the morning ramble to uh, find out what's been going on in my life. If you if you are wondering, do if you've just joined, go um, go on catch up and watch the beginning part of this video. I explain a few things that's been going on for the Mead household. It is Ambrose Bishop of Milan, Teacher of the Faith's Lesser Festival today. So uh, I've got my book celebrating the saints. So we'll listen and find out a little bit about him later. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Thank you, Liz. And thanks for the arrival of our third great-grandchild. Oh, Pat and Ray, that's amazing. Let me... Uh... You'll have to fill me in some more details when we get a little bit further into the prayers. Uh, don't want to disturb too much the flow of morning prayer when we... Uh... There we go. Right, you'll have to forgive me a few more details in a minute, Pam Ray. Praise the Lord. There is always life. Always life. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Right, Psalm 44. It's a long one. I might take a sip of coffee for this. Psalm 44. We have heard with our ears, O God, our forebears have told us all that you did in their days in time of old. How with your hand you drove out nations and planted us in and broke the power of peoples and set us free. For not by their own sword did our, our ancestors, 
for not by their own sword did our ancestors take the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you were gracious to them. You are my king and my God, who, command, who commanded salvation for Jacob. Through you, we were, through you we drove back our adversaries. Through your name we trod down our foes. For I did not trust in my bow. It was not my own sword that saved me. It was you that saved us from our enemies and put our adversaries to shame. We gloried in God all the day long and we were ever praising your name. But now you have rejected us and brought us to shame, and go not out with our enemies. You have made us turn our backs on our enemies, and our enemies have despoiled us. You have made us like sheep to be slaughtered, and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a pittance, and made no profit for their say on their sale. You have made us the taunt of our neighbours, the scorn and derision of those that are round about us. You have made us a byword among the nations, among the peoples they wag their heads. My confusion is daily before me, and shame has covered my face. At the taunts of the slanderer and reviler, at the sight of the enemy and avenger, all this has come upon us. Though we have not forgotten you, and have not played false to your covenant. Our hearts have not turned back, nor our steps gone out of your, your way. Yet you have crushed us in the haunt of jackals, and covered us with the shadow of death. If we have forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out our hands to any strange God, will not God search it out, for he knows the secrets of the heart. But for your sake we are killed all the day long, and are counted as sheep for slaughter. Rise up, why sleep, O Lord? Awake, and do not reject us for ever. Why do you hide your face, and forget our grief and oppression? Our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaves to the earth. Rise up, O Lord, to help us, and redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Not all psalms are joyful and praise psalms. Some are psalms of lament, like that one. Uh, psalms are very good because they teach us how it's okay to feel abandoned that it's okay to not feel close to God all the time, to be angry at God, to be confused by what's happening around us, to feel God's absence, um, and yet still go to him in prayer. And so I do commend the Psalms to you and to not be misled in thinking that a life of prayer is all about praise. Um, sometimes it's pressing in when things are really difficult and Psalms can really help with that. If you'd like to read the Old Testament for yourself, it's Isaiah chapter 45, beginning at verse 14 until the end. I do like Isaiah, by the way. But we are going to move on down to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. I must say I'm quite relieved to be out of Revelation. Um, there's a lot of imagery that really is hard to unpack without any with any great certainty, as I've said and as Mark has said all along. So let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Um, it's a, a letter. Paul. Silvanus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, 
constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labour of love and steadfast hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of people we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution you received the word with joy. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers. In Macedonia and Achaia. I have no idea how to say that name. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place where your faith in God has become known. So that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you. And now you turn to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. There we go. That ends the reading. A nice, short, um, hello, how are you? We're praying for you. All the lovely kind of opening chit-chat that uh, we put in letters to someone whom we care about. Uh, Paul, um, Silvanus and Timothy are on their missionary journeys. Um, they go to places, they, they share the good news of Jesus, they go into the temples, they go into the streets, they go everywhere to proclaim the good news of Jesus and, and some, sometimes it lands and here it has in Thessalonica. And... But of course, we all need encouragement, don't we? And so to stop people straying from the path for uh, the tensions that come when a new faith is being developed, when ideas that, and practices that perhaps are not, that are um, carried over from past um, faiths can... Um, wind their way in and then not be um, the gospel as Jesus taught it and so you know full-on encouragement and direction and guidance all this stuff that comes through the letters it is thought that the letters were meant to be shared amongst the churches so one church is written to and then it's taken around to the other churches to read there is, there's no real clear evidence that they were taken further afield. So there wouldn't be lots of travelling letters to other places. So this is why when we've looked at other letters in the past, we've talked about it being very contextual sometimes. Um, specific situations have cropped up that Paul and the other apostles have heard about and are therefore addressing for that particular place. Although we can always pick wisdom out from um, letters, we do have to understand the context and the reasoning behind it. Here, this looks like a lovely letter. You're great. You're doing really well. You're full of the Holy Spirit. The word has landed. You are setting an example to others. So, wonderful start. Let's hear about Ambrose. A quick little thing about Ambrose because he's quite interesting. He was born in Trier in 339. Ambrose was one of an aristocratic family and was governor of northern Italy with his headquarters in Milan. While trying to bring peace to the Christian community with Ar Arianism and Orthodoxy, each trying to gain the election of its man as bishop. Ambrose, known and respected by all, though not yet baptised, found himself being urged to accept the role of bishop himself and gathered Christian populace taking up the cry, Ambrose for bishop. He finally accepted and was baptised and consecrated on this day in the year 374. 
Ambrose proved his worth, becoming a teacher and preacher of great renown, promoting the essential divinity of Christ as being the centre of Christian faith. He is credited with being the first person to introduce hymns into the Western worship and wrote several hymns himself which he gave a clear undertaking of orthodox teaching. He came up against the imperial powers and with support of the whole community stood firm against the interfer interference of the state in church affairs and matters of faith. He also baptised a few to St Augustine. Ambrose died on Good Friday, April the 4th, in the year 397. So not quite 60. Interesting. Um, when I mentioned uh, the letters and how they were written, sometimes contextually for specific misunderstandings and misdirections, here there's a little nod to the fact that there was orthodoxy and Arianism that was going on um, at the time when he became bishop. Slight misteachings. Um, maybe I'll go into Arianism another time. It's quite in depth. It's all about the work of the Holy Spirit and God and the Trinity and how we understand the Trinity. And that's quite an in depth one. There's all sorts of um, discrepancies and arguments about the work of the three persons of the trinity and how that works and it's really difficult to describe the trinity without straying into something like arianism which is not quite how we're supposed to understand so maybe when we get to trinity sunday there may be a little bit of an unpacking of that for you anyway I waffled at the beginning, so we're um, a bit late starting, and so I'm going to press on and go now to our responses. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. We move on to the Benedictus. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and, they, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Those who, will, those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Right, let's turn to our prayers now. I see something from Roz, I'll just add that in. Um, if you have anybody that you would like prayer for, please do now pop it into the comments and I will add them to the prayer list. It can be for a short time, it can be for a long time, it can be COVID, it can be something as benign as a migraine. So, do please um, let us know if there's anybody that you would like prayer for. So, Roz, you have got Julie. 
Right, so let's put Julie in. Is there anybody else that we would like prayer for this morning? Pat and Ray, third grandchild. Boy or girl? Have we got a name yet? Congratulations. Great granddaughter, sorry. Goodness, great. I apologise. June, happy birthday to Diane. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Diane. Happy birthday to you. I'm not even sure she's watching. Happy birthday, Diane, if you are watching. 21 again. Right. I uh, don't see any others. Do let us know if we've got a boy or a girl. Ah, Carol. Okay, Pat. Add her to the list. Have we got any others before I begin? Doesn't matter. I, could, I always keep my eyes open anyway. I picked, and I've lost it. There it is. Pick the prayer for Christmas is coming. That's off of this little prayer booklet. Really good. Personal prayers here. Um, yeah, if we did send it out. So if you do have a copy, it's still very relevant. Um, Obviously, we now need to be praying for patience. I hate praying for patience. You get trials when you pray for patience. But patience while we wait for this vaccine to be rolled out and good sense. Amber, oh, beautiful name. That's lovely. Oh, bless. I hope mum and baby are doing well. So... Let's pray for the needs of our world as we continue the morning prayer. Loving God, we do lift to you this, our world, with all its troubles, with all its difficulties. Lord, most of it caused by us, human humanity. Lord, we pray that you give us all wisdom to be better stewards of our world, to treat each other with care, justice and fairness to stop wanting to war against each other and to seek always to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the Brexit negotiations that seem to have stalled. We do pray for all those livelihoods, not only struggling under these COVID restrictions, but we also pray for them now who are worried about how their businesses will continue to after Brexit. Lord, we pray that our leaders would sit around the table and negotiate a fair and just deal that cares for all. We pray for the reputation of the United Kingdom, that it would not be harmed during these negotiations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all businesses and for those who have lost jobs during this COVID crisis. We pray for all those who are struggling to put meals on the table, to heat their homes or to even keep their homes. We pray that the government funding and uh, support packages would reach those who need it. We pray for those businesses that are going through receivership at this time, such as Arcadia. And for all those jobs and those people who are concerned this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for an end to this pandemic. Pandemic. We give thanks that the vaccines, uh, several vaccines, have been developed. And we pray for this vaccine that is now to be distributed in this country. Lord, we pray that you give a sense of patience and wisdom to us all as the vaccine goes to those who are of greatest need. Lord, we pray that wise distribution, strategic planning would all be in place so that there can be a fair and quick distribution of this vaccine. Lord, pray for us all as we wait 
for COVID test results or for um, a vaccine for ourselves so at whatever age group or um, level of need that we are at. Help us in the meantime to be wise, to behave um, with and set a good example. May we use our masks and our hand sanitizers. May we maintain social distancing. This Christmas time, let us not lose sight of the light at the end of the tunnel and get caught up in festivities and put ourselves and others at risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our children and young people. As school draws to a close, we pray for all those university students that are taking tests at this time in order to come home to be with their families. We pray for each one of them that their results would be negative, that they would have safe travels. And we pray for our younger uh, students, those at secondary school and infant schools and junior schools. We pray that their childhoods would not be harmed by this pandemic, that their mental health for all our young people and children would be protected and that they would stay safe and healthy as we get closer to Christmas. We lift to you those, our students and young people that we care for, Joel. Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack and Mia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all that have been working in education during these difficult times. The teachers who have to teach with masks and hand sanitizers, with regulations, with windows open, with freezing classrooms and risking their own health and those of their loved ones. We give thanks for their great courage, for their calling and their ministry to our children and young people. We give thanks for all those that have had to put these practices and regulations and read through all the paperwork in order to make our schools safe places for everyone. We pray for them as the gets closer to Christmas that they would have greater courage and that you would draw alongside them and comfort them as they as the end gets closer the fear of catching the virus would be more so that it means that they can have a better Christmas. I lift to you, Noel, Lisa, Nick, Susan, Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asha, Matthew and Sarah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take a break for a moment from prayer just to say I was reading about the um, Vietnam War and how veterans that got closer to their time going home would be more nervous and more frightened because the risk feels greater as the time for coming home gets closer. And so I pray that for our teachers, um, the fear of catching it may of this virus may be stronger as they're coming closer to the end of term um, and Christmas and the importance of the celebration. Um, so do keep our teachers and uh, young people and our children in your prayers at this time. I'm going to move on now to those who are unwell and to also give thanks, loving God, even though in times of great sadness and in this pandemic, 
when lives are lost, new life does get born. We give thanks for Pat and Ray's great grandchild, Amber. We pray for mum and baby that they would be well. We pray that Amber would grow in strength and health and to be a strong woman of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do pray for those who are ill at this time, Lord, who are in need of your healing touch in mind, body or spirit. We lift to you, Robert, Georgina, Ruth, Christine, Sandra, Eddie, Dennis, Dawn, Robbie, Phoebe, Ricky, Addie, William, Stephanie, Beverly, Roy, Rachel, Martina's mum as she decides whether a visit to England for Christmas is wise, for Alan, for Leslie, for Linda, for Liz, for Marcia, for Gerald, for Sylvia, for Jerry, for Mark, for Dennis, for Beryl, for Mary, for Ken, for Susan, for Kevin, for Pauline, for Eric, for Claire, for Lynn, for Anne, for Judy, for Judy, for Catherine, for Lizzie, for Natasha, for Tizzy, for Maria, for Aurea, for Joe, for Alex, for Caroline and Donald, that they would find the perfect home to move to. For Julie and for Carol. Lord, help us, the loved ones and friends of these people. Trust them into the hands of doctors, nurses, care workers and to your Holy Spirit to bring healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christmas is coming. We are expectant in this season of Advent. Christmas is coming, Lord. Yet a little cause for cheer. Is there any point in tinsel and glitter? Will there be any coming together? What of the funny foibles and quirkiness that drive us to distraction? The silly jokes and games. The overspend, the overfeed, the overindulged that have made Christmas Christmas. With so much stripped away, bring us back to the heart of Christmas, when love became incarnate. May the flame of the Christmas lantern illuminate our minds, and the love that came down at Christmas fill our hearts. May the angel's song of peace and goodwill bless again the earth. Give to each one of us the cup of kindness, and one measure of joy, and stir up in us good Christmas cheer. For the love of him who gave Christmas its name, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are fearful and affected by the coronavirus for illness, isolation or anxiety. We pray that they would find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping our national policies. We pray that they would make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our doctors, nurses, medical researchers, those who are working on a vaccine and all who are in the NHS. We, give, we pray that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. 
protect the mental health and well-being of all who work in the NHS. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our care homes. We pray that the vaccine would get there quickly. And we give thanks that so many now are able to see their loved ones and to visit. Lord, we pray for those who still yet are unable to and get ask for your wisdom and patience for them, for your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the vulnerable, for the fearful, for the gravely ill, for the dying and for all their loved ones, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So our collect for today, sorry that the morning prayer has gone on for so long, that's not too bad. I've rambled on worse. God of hosts, who called Ambrose from the governor's throne to be a bishop in your church and an intrepid champion of your faithful people, mercifully grant that as he did not fear to rebuke rulers, so we, with like courage, may contend for the faith we have received. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us play, pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord when he comes find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer. Um, I explained a little bit about what was going on in the Mead, in Reverend Mead's household this last week. Um, so if you want to catch up with that, that's in, on at the beginning. But just to say thank you for all your prayers and messages of support. Thank you for your hearts and your little care bubbles and all those thumbs up that come up during um, morning prayer. It feels like amens. It feels like um, we're all together. I will be back tomorrow. Until then, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Stay safe and stay healthy.